But then right about age 25, plus or minus a year or two, everything changes. So many nervous system features like digestion and breathing and heart rate are hard to change. Other aspects of our nervous system are actually quite easy to change. And one of the great gifts of childhood, adolescence, and young adulthood is that we can learn through almost passive experience. We don't have to focus that hard in order to learn new things. In fact, children go from being able to speak no language whatsoever to being able to speak many, many words and comprise sentences, including words they've never heard before, which is remarkable. It means that the portions of the brain involved in speech and language are actually primed to learn and create new combinations. What this tells us is that the young brain is a plasticity machine. But then right about age 25, plus or minus a year or two, everything changes. After age 25 or so, in order to get changes in our nervous system, we have to engage in a completely different set of processes in order to get those changes to occur and for them, more importantly, to stick around. And this is something that I think is vastly overlooked in the popular culture discussion about neuroplasticity. People always talk about fire together, wire together. Fire together, wire together is true. It is the statement of my colleague at Stanford, Carla Schatz, and it's an absolute truth about the way that the nervous system wires up early in development. But fire together, wire together doesn't apply in the same way after age 25. And so we have these little memes and these little uh, quotes that you know circulate on the internet, like fire together, wire together, or there's a famous quote from the uh, the greatest neurobiologist of all time, Ramoni Cajal. I think it goes something like, you know, should somebody wish to change their nervous system, they could be the uh, sculptor of their nervous system in any way they want, something like that. And that sounds great. I mean, who wouldn't want to change their nervous system any way they want? But what's lost in those statements is how to actually accomplish that. And we're going to cover that today. But please understand that early in development, your nervous system is connected very broadly in ways that make it very hard to do anything well. From birth until about age 25, those connections get refined, mainly through the removal of connections that don't serve us and the incredible strengthening of connections that relate to either powerful experiences or that allow us to do things like walk and talk and do math, etc. And then after age 25, if we want to change those connections, those super highways of connectivity, we have to engage in some very specific processes and those processes, as we'll soon learn, are gated, meaning you can't just decide to change your brain. You actually have to go through a series of steps to change your internal state in ways that will allow you to change your brain. If you want to learn as an adult, you have to be alert. It might seem so obvious, but I think a lot of people don't think about when in their 24-hour cycle they're most alert. When during the day do you typically tend to be most alert? That will afford you an advantage in learning specific things during that period of time. So don't give up that period of time for things that are meaningless, useless, or not aligned with your goals. That would be a terrible time to get into passive observance or just letting your time get soaked away by something. That is a valuable asset. That epinephrine released from your brainstem is going to occur more readily at particular phases of of your 24 hour cycle than others during the waking phase, of course, you should know when those are. And then you could start to think about the behavioral practices, maybe the pharmacologic practices like caffeine, hydration, et cetera, that will support heightened levels of alertness. Attention is something that can be learned and attention is critical for creating that condition where whatever it is that you are engaging in will modify your brain in a way that you won't have to spend so much attention on it going forward. That's the essence of plasticity, that things will eventually become reflexive. The language that you're learning, the motor movement, the cognitive skill, the ability to suppress an emotional response or to engage in emotional response, depending on what your goals are and what's appropriate for you. Increasing acetylcholine can be accomplished pharmacologically through nicotine. However, there are certain dangers for many people to do that as well as a cost, financial cost. Learning how to engage the cholinergic system through the use of the visual system. Practicing how long can you maintain focus with 
blinks as you need them. But how long can you maintain visual focus on a target, just on a piece of paper set a few feet away in the room or at the level of your computer screen? These are actually things that people do in communities where high levels of visual focus are necessary. Now, the other way to get high levels of visual focus and alertness is to have a panic or to have a situation that's very, very bad. You will be immediately focused on everything related to that situation. But that's unfortunate. What we're really talking about here is trying to harness the mechanisms of attention and get better at paying attention. You may want to do that with your auditory system, not with your visual system. But I know that one can get better at listening. One can get better at learning. One can get better at all sorts of things by anchoring in these mechanisms. Now, of course, you can also combine protocols. You can decide to de combine ph pharmacology with these learning practices. Many people in communities do that. Many people are doing that naturally by drinking their coffee right before they do their learning. But I would also encourage you to think about how long those learning bouts are. If you think you have ADD or, or ADHD, see a clinician, but... You should also ask yourself, are you giving up the best period of focus that you have each day naturally to some other thing like social media or some other activity that doesn't serve you well? Or are you devoting that period to the, the opportunity to learn? You should also ask yourself whether or not you're trying to focus too much for too long during the day. I know some very high performing individuals very high performing in a ver variety of contexts and none of them are focused all day long. Many of them take walks down the hallway, sometimes mumbling to themselves or not paying attention to anything else. They go for bike rides. They take walks. They are not trying to engage their mind at maximum focus all the time. Very few people do that because we learn best in these 90 minute bouts inside of one of these ultradian cycles. And it, I should Repeat again that within that 90 minute cycle, you should not expect yourself to focus for the entire period of one 90 minute cycle. The beginning and end are going to be a little bit flickering in and out of focus. How do you know when one of these 90 minute cycles is starting? Well, typically when you wake up is the beginning of the first 90 minute cycle, but it does, it's not down to the minute. You'll be able to tap into your sense of these 90 minute cycles as you start to engage in these learning practices, should you choose. And then of course, getting some non-sleep deep rest or just deliberate disengagement such as walking or running or just sitting eyes closed or eyes open kind of mindlessly, it might seem in a chair, just letting your thoughts move around after a learning bout will accelerate the rate of plasticity that's been shown in quality peer reviewed studies. And then of course, deep sleep. And so what we can start to see is that plasticity is your natural right early in life, but after about age 25, you have to do some work in order to access it. 